Greed is also another way we could lay, put, lay, make a layout for our website. Um, just like Flexbox. So it is just like Flexbox, but it's not like Flexbox. Essentially, we make it, we use Greed to create like a 2D layout of our, of, for our website. And you understand what I'm trying to say when we move on. I'm still going to make use of what we used before, but this time, just a, bit, a little bit of things would change. Um, I would, we wouldn't need this any longer. Um, but okay, let's, okay, let me remove this for now. And, this, and then, instead of, uh, let's say 100, then instead of display flex, so now, instead of saying display flex, of course, I have to remove these ones. So instead of saying display flex, I'm going to say display grid. Now let's see what happens. So now, display grid, it looks like nothing has happened, right? That's because we need to put in some things. It just looks like, oh, okay, things are stacked on each other, right? Now we need to... What the most important thing I want you to know is that now this blue area has become a grid container. The blue area has become a grid container. And whatever we do, we specify in the grid container would obviously affect the green, the grid items. That is the things, the grid items. Now, The first concept I would like to point out is what we call the grid template column. So that's the first thing I want to point out. So we call it the grid template columns. Now, when we say things, so where we put this particular property, these things get broken down into columns. So they be, so they are broken into columns, depending on how many columns you want it to be. So, of course, you know how columns are. Yeah, so, you know, this is a row, now columns. Now, let's look at that. They usually, you could specify what you, the, the, how would I call it, the units you want. But most of the time, you are going to use, and you are going to use the unit called FR, which is fraction. So let's say one FR, one FR, and let's start with that first, and you see what I'm going to say. So now this is basically saying we want to divide this grid container into two layouts that are evenly spaced. So one FR, one FR. So let me show you what I'm saying. So as you can see, there are two layouts. There are two layouts here. This is one layout. You cannot see the line, but just imagine the line is there. And this is another layout. So it's broken into two equal halves. If we increase this to two, so you can see what will happen. So it has taken twice the space compared to this one. But well, let's take it back to one FR. So you can see back. Now let's increase it to, let's bring one more FR. So this, so you can see this, this, so you can see it's three columns. And immediately it passes the third column. The item inside moves to the next line. So you can see one, two, three, third column, it moves to the next line. If it is, by now, if it is one FR, you could already tell what will happen. So one, two, three, four. Now, we are kind of repeating ourselves. So instead of saying one FR, one FR, one FR, one FR, what we could do is we'll just say repeat one FR. And, oh, okay, sorry, <laughs> repeat. I need to say how many times. So let's say, uh, let's say two. Let's start with two first. And you see what happens. So it repeats that. So you can see one, two. So one, two. That's the same thing. If you make it four, it's be four one fr would be that you wrote one fr four times. 
So one, two, three, four. That's how that's going to that's how it is. Now, if you don't want to use FR, you could decide you could specify how big or how small you want this. Um, um, what's it called? You want the columns to be. So, if you say, uh, let's say, if you say 80 pixels, and let's say 200 pixels, 100 pixels, 40 pixels. So, that's what it will look like. That's what it looks like now, because that's what we specified. Let's remove. Let me remove this. Mm -hmm. That gives us like a better vision. <laughs> that better. That would. This helps us to visualize what we're doing some more. Let me, let's make this. Should I make this one fifty? Uh, but let's say I make this 500, let's just say 500. So, yeah. So that's what is happening inside. Or like if I do one FR, one FR, one FR. See, they're divided into four equal parts. Yeah. So that's that's what we do when we apply grid templates columns to it. Now, the re main reason why we make use of grid is because it helps us to create a two D layout. Now, what do I mean by a two D layout? I will explain. So let's start with um, let's make everything. Three one F R and third. Mm -hmm. So now we can see this is here, this is here, this is here, this is here. But for some reason, you want let's say let's imagine this first one to be like the nav bar. So you want it to stretch to the entire end. And uh, okay, let's give each of them like different colors so that uh, we could it's. It would look better. So let us see. This would be red, and this would be green, and this would be okay. Um, I can call her yellow. So we have these. So let's give it like a two D like effect. And let's work with that. So we'll, give, we'll make it have like a 2D-like effect um, so that you, you see what I'm trying to say. Now, I'm going to stretch this red one down to this path, and we'll see how to do that. Now, this is where uh, we begin to make use of grid column, which is going to be by inside each of the elements or the grid item. So inside here, which is the first child, which is this red box, I'm going to say <clears throat> grid. Oh God, excuse me. So inside this this first child, I'm going to say grid column. Now, what I want to point out before I even okay, let me first type it so you you see grid column one over. So now you can see it moved down here. So let me explain what this one over three means. Where we create a grid cont container and we give it, and then we use this grid template column. Now what's happening is, let me remove this so you can see better. I want you to know that whenever you give a grid container like grid templates column, it creates a grid line. So this first 
place where my cursor is is one then this is this is two this is three and this is four so a better way to visualize this is this um, basic concept of grid layout um, So you can see in the grid lines you have one, two, three, and four. So that's what I'm kind of saying. So what this means is that this particular child, which is this red box, is spanning from this one and coming all the way to this place, which is three, which is what happens. So if I save again and I so we can see it's coming from here to here. So let's so now this um now what I would like to do is to move this not move to make this stretch from here down to this area and what I would I could quickly do is First of all, I have to maintain where it is in the column. So remember, this is one, this is two, this is three, this is four. So what I would do is for the column, I would say grid column three over four. So it's taking from three to four. All right. Therefore, I'll not say grid row. I'll say grid row because I want it to move like here. So, mm -hmm. because it, this is a row, this is a row, this is a row. So I want it to stretch between two rows. Mm -hmm. So I would say one that is started from this row to this one, two, three. So I want it to get to the three. Okay, so let's say one over three, save, and I refresh. So you can see it has here done that. If I didn't want, <coughs> excuse me, if I didn't want this to stretch all the way, but I wanted this green, let's imagine it was this green, I want it to be here. Um, let's apply the same concept. Let me remove this so that it looks like what it was before. So I'm going to, well, this is the last child, right? So which is green. I'm going to say grid column. Let's, so where is it? One, two, three. So grid column two to three. No, no, no. Grid column, oh, I don't even need to stress myself. So grid column two, three, four. So grid column two to four. Okay, so yes. So as you can see, it's stretching. So you can see how it has this 2D like effect on your twin. So yeah, that's about so this essentially covers the basic or the basics for what greed is about. This covers the basics for what greed is about. Of course, there are more things about greed, but uh, I wouldn't want to cover that for now. So the next thing we're just going to talk about would be box shadows, essentially. So we're going to talk about box shadows, and I hope you enjoy that one too. All right. Come to the area where we add a shadow to an element. So essentially, we're just going to be adding shadows to a, an element. Usually, we'll just call it a box shadow. Yeah. So to start with, I'm going to remove this. And just leave one box behind. <laughs> uh, this two, I will just, yeah. If I refresh, this is what I'm going to have. Uh, I also think I should give this a height and width. Let's say height um, 200 pixels, width 200 pixels. And therefore, this, I no longer need this. Um, so if I refresh, now we just have a loony box on its own. So I'm going to be giving this box shadow, sorry, I'm going to be giving, <clears throat> I'm going to, excuse me, 
I'm going to be giving this box a box shadow and to do that I'm simply just going to come here and say box shadow and then I'm going to give it to um, let's just say 12 pixel here and then 11 pixel sorry 11 pixel here and let's see what so now we have this so you're wondering what's happening let's make this 15 pixels so that you see so you can see it's moving it on this horizontal axis i think this if this is the x-axis this x-axis this is x x and y okay so this should be the x-axis or let's, let's just see the horizontal axis so you can see so the more i increase that so let's say i see 25 pixels the more that shadow is going to move if I if I do the same thing, let's say for example here 15, you'll see it move, it would move down. But if I say minus, let's see what happens. See, it goes to the opposite direction for that one, but let's just make it positive for now. Now that's for the best two. If we bring in another one, let's say we say five pixels, this is so we know that this is for the x axis this is for the y axis this would determine how blurred this shadow would be because now the shadow is so thick and solid and let's make it let's just make it five five so now you see we want it to be blurred so you can see it's blurred the higher the number the more blurred it would be so you can see it has this blurred effect. It's not as solid as it was initially. So um, we, if we add in another one, it will determine how wide it will spread. This shadow would spread. So if we say five pixels, you can see it's spreading. If you say 15 pixels, it's spreading out if you say 25 pixels it's spreading out some more so that's what so remember this is the x this is the x axis y axis this determines how blurred it would be and this determines how wide it would spread if you don't like the default color um if you don't like want it to be black you could just give it red then we can just see so it gives you red so you could just remove this too if you don't want that to and just give this red so you can see yeah see that changes the color of the box shadow so you could direct, decide to change the direction of how you want the box shadow to be yeah and another thing I want to point out is that you could give it multiple box shadows. So let's say, for example, you know, now if I say if I come back, um, sorry, let me make that comma. If, and I come back. Now you can see it's coming towards this side and down. But let's say we want a green one that is going towards the top. For, uh, so we could just see minus five pixels, minus five pixels. And then we say green. And let's see. So you can see now there. Okay, so now you can see there is a green one here and there is a red one here. So that's how you could have multiple box shadows for one particular element. So that's it about box shadows. Next, we are going to be dealing with transform. I'm going to be working dealing with transform. Um, I'm hoping you will like that too. All right, let's get to it.